You're on uh, ABC Radio Sydney. I'm James Valentine. It's it's significant whether you're a viewer or not of Neighbours. It's a very significant moment. Um, this that um, Neighbours has reached. Where well, unfortunately, it looks as though its broadcast partner in the UK, Channel Five, um, will not be continuing to uh, to be part of that uh, part of that arrangement. So. It's sort of Neighbours acts with a question mark because it hasn't quite been axed yet, but unless they find an equivalent financial partner, the production house Fremantle that makes Neighbours will not be able to continue. 36 years Neighbours has been running. 36 years. Um, this tune has been bringing Australia Everybody and England together. Good neighbors, just a friendly way each morning. To make a better day. But as well as that relationship, Neighbours has in fact been a global phenomenon. Michael Bodie, media critic and author, joins us uh, this morning. Morning, Michael. G'day, James. It's, um, I, look, I, I reckon I've watched it about twice in my life, but I feel sad for some reason. Are you serious? Well, you weren't right into it during the, uh, the heyday of Scott and Charlene and the no. wedding, which was... The biggest ratings ever for a soap in Australia and brought in 20 million viewers in the UK. <laughs> it was big, James. I know. I, I understand that. I think I was possibly slightly too old. Do you know what I mean? Like it's sort of like I was – is this is in the is, – is this sort of mid – early 80s? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but that's – I mean, it's a bit of a misnomer because it does have uh, – while it was created to sort of show young people – it has had a pretty rusted on older audience too that likes watching it each night, um, particularly in Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So huge in Britain, huge here. But the format and the style of production became a uh, a, a world format. Yeah, so it's become a real sort of factory for Fremantle out at Nunna Wadding in, uh, in Melbourne uh, with the sort of five days a week. And they lifted, they even lifted production um, higher a few years ago when Channel 5 wanted to li- lift it up to 250 episodes a week, uh, a year, sorry. So it's very much um, a rite of passage for many Australian cast and crew to have gone through there. And uh, for, the, for the stars like Russell Crowe and Guy Pearce and uh, Delta Goodrum and Margot Robbie have been through there, It does. Um, it's given them a sort of discipline that a lot of actors um, really benefit from. So it's been... It's been a big thing for so many Australians. It's been a great export, and um, it looks as though I, I sort of would fear for its future if uh, the UK is pulled out because they, um, Channel Five, was a massive financer of it. They recruit, they got it from the BBC um, back in 2008. They paid 550 million for a 10-year deal, so mm. they're putting in sort of 50 million a year to pay for this. So. Um, that's why I think um, it's, it's just not great and we yeah. can find someone else who can stump up that sort of cash. Have viewers dropped off? Are these sort of shows no longer as popular as they once were? Well, the, uh, I'm surprised in the UK. It's still drawing more than a million viewers a day, so that's pretty solid over there. I think 10 made a major mistake when the digital multi-channels began and they thought that that drag some viewers from 10 to uh, its secondary channel by moving neighbours there, and it didn't really work. And it's now sort of getting 100,000 viewers plus um, each day on their secondary channel, which I think is not... Uh, the comparison you've got to make is with Home and Away, which is still on 7, and that's drawing half a million viewers plus each day. So right. there's still an audience there, particularly for when... Um, one of the cast members drives off a cliff or gets exploded. So, um, and, and yeah, what, have, one happens in the first half of the year, the other in the second, just to uh, just to get it going. But in the UK, exactly. have, has the audience dropped off? I, I like to think of this as you know, this is this is how they come to know what delightful lifestyles we have here. Yeah, no, I think that, that's the interesting thing. The audience is quite solid, but it's a bit of a shift for Channel Five. And uh, you know, when we think we're going more global, it does look as though this is a parochial. Um, moved by them because they want to focus more on British dramas. Um, they've said that explicitly, that um, this doesn't fit the British drama. And um, ironically, one of the reasons they're getting back into it is they've just revived All Creatures Great and Small, another sort of 80s. Right. Um, that's been really successful. So it's sort of a, a rejig for the channel, but it is the channel that basically has paved the way for neighbours. So yeah. uh, the other thing that I'd worry about is 
Ten is an uh, American company, essentially owned by CBS Paramount. And Neighbours never really worked in the States, so I'm not sure that an American company will have a great sort of um, capacity to want to keep it going. Yeah, does the company. US so tend more towards the bold and beautiful drama? They don't have a sort of, they don't like a suburban drama like like, like a Neighbours, like a sort of... Well, the, the, they don't want the far more realistic dramas. Yeah. <laughs> neighbors. Yeah, it is. Um, they're more daytime. It's funny that part of the Neighbours appeal and Home and Away is it's still sort of at the, at the prime time edge at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whereas all the American soaps are in the middle of the day. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting difference in in formats. But, yeah, I think that's the big thing that I'd be worried about if I was Neighbours. Yeah, yeah. And do, the, sure. does, do these things are such a product, you know, Neighbours and Home and Away are a product of, you know, you could say almost peak free-to-air television in Australia, do they also not really have a place in streaming services? Well, this is a question. I mean, you know, would a Netflix or an Amazon or an Apple, would they want to take, I don't know how, I don't know the numbers, but, you know, if you've got a million daily viewers in the UK and you get moved that to streaming, is that going to convert to 200,000 a day and is that worthwhile? So um, there'll be a few streaming services that will be running the numbers today, I'm sure, and Fremantle will be... I think Fremantle will go to the streamers rather than the broadcasters over there. I mean, it originally, this was originally on BBC One, so the biggest channel in the UK. Um, so it has sort of, you can see that it has waned over time by moving to Channel 5 over there. But um, yeah, I think if there's still a few hundred thousand viewers in one country, um, you know, for a streaming service, that's that's big numbers. Yeah. Michael Bodie's with us, a uh, media critic. Also, Vaya Pashas joins us as well. Vaya uh, creates uh, the weekly Nay Buzz podcast. She's a TV writer with Hard Quiz. She's, look, between the tears, she's tweeting at hashtag Save Neighbours as well. Vay, are you okay? I'm in disbelief. I'm in denial. There's no time to save this show. Yeah, there's still time. And, like, it hasn't gone yet, but unless, I, I guess, they find an injection of $50 million a year, it's going to be hard, isn't it? Yeah, we just need a bit of money. <laughs> we can't make it in Australia on its own. Surely a GoFundMe page can fix this up right now. We're ready. The fan community are ready to crowdfund it. Yeah, we yeah. We just need a lot of us. What do you love about it? Why Why nay buzz? Why, do you, why are you engaged? It's the daily escapism. It's the melodrama. It's Carl and Susan fighting over the cucumbers in the, in the back veggie patch. And then... Rob Mills trying to uh, take out the entire cast on a murderous island spree. It can <laughs> last. The other week we had a um, gale force winds destroyed a part of the one of the beloved bars oh. with a telegraph pole. I didn't know Ramsey Street was in a cyclone zone. I didn't realise that. Yeah, they had a twister a few years ago too. You, <laughs> you can't. You just can't predict it. You can't predict. Very unpredictable weather, weather through there. Does it? Re- is it a? Is it a? Uh, a reflection of Australia? Do we see Australia through Neighbours? Well, that's the, the thing we've been sort of campaigning for is more representation, but we want sort of more of a diverse cultural picture of what we see. But, like, we have... There's a, a trans character played by trans actor and activist Georgie Stone. We we had the first primetime gay marriage with David and Aaron. I say we, like I'm responsible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, David and Aaron, and we have... Um, a, a huge LGBTQ plus representation on the screen, and no, like no other show, no other soap really is flying that flag. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, for most you might have, you know, might, perhaps, what, perhaps what's common is a sort of, you know, you might have a couple of years in your teen years where you, you love neighbours. You've kept it going, Bea. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused as to how you said you were too old. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd sort of, I'm sort of, I don't mean that. I mean, in that peak. Like, I'm about, uh, say, in 1982, I'm, you know, 21, 22. I'm not really watching yeah. television at that, that point. So I miss all that Scott and Charlene thing. It just wasn't in, in my world. <laughs> From what I find in my fan community is we were a lot of uni students or high school students that would catch it after school or um, in the UK. They have nothing to do during the day. They're watching the lunchtime viewing. And then again, they're watching the early evening airing. So uh, it's that, that group that have grown up with it and just stick with it. And yeah. uh, for me, it was when Twitter came onto the scene is that I started just tweeting out little, oh, that's weird that Tony's, you know, Tony thinks his wife's going to come back from the dead, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly you find 
hundreds of people are talking about it with you and basking in the nonsense of it and then that's where the the community took off. Yeah, well, look, there's been a resurrection storyline that's 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 worked before. So, uh, Vaya, thank you so much for joining us. Vaya Pachos uh, writes for Hard Quiz as well, but also creates the Nay Buzz podcast. Michael Bodie, thanks for your insights. My pleasure, James. You're on ABC Radio Sydney. We'll have AM in a moment or two. Let's just see what the roads are up.